You know how we all have fond memories of our childhood? Well, mine lie, a lot of mine lie in devices that I used when I was a kid. One of them was this. I've already got a video up on this. Do a video, do a Google search um, for C1 cassette book machine on YouTube, and you'll be able to find my video along with many others. This basically was a specialized cassette player that allowed me to gain access to the printed word through audio recordings. You're probably thinking, well, why not just go to the library for that? This came from the library, actually. This is a special, um, like I was saying a moment ago, specialized tape player to play specialized tapes. And um, it was specifically designed for people like myself who can't see very well. These days, the player that's distributed by the library is a digital flash cartridge player, and they've also got an app for the iPhone that allows them to play these special books. But when I was growing up, the cassette player was pretty much all we had. Um, there was a record player in service, but it was just going out of service when I got into the system. So I'm not going to bother going over that. Another device I grew up with was a device called the Braille and Speak. If you take the notes application of the iPhone and replace the Bluetooth connectivity with um, with serial connectivity through through cables, that's basically what you have in the Braille and Speak. It's very basic, but at the time it was very state of the art because if you ever try to lug around a Perkins Braille writer. Believe me, you know what I'm talking about when I say that thing is heavy. Plus, braille paper is considerably more expensive because it's thicker and has to be specially produced. So the volume of sale is lower. So this little device contained what would be the equivalent of 50 pages of braille that you could export to a computer, have it printed, have it embossed. Um, and the later versions of the braille and speak had the ability to have things like an alarm clock, things like, um, you know, an appointment book. Very, very sophisticated for its time. Um, now, the device could also go online. Certainly not through the way we think of it as today, uh, today is going online. But what I mean by this is you could hook up an external modem that the company sells, or sold, I'm sorry, and get online through dial-up and access. Um, this didn't have a web browser as we know it today. Instead, it would access what is called a bullet, what was called a bulletin board. And that was basically the precursor to modern web browsers. So that was the Braille and Speak. Another device I grew up with was the, Fl the Franklin Language Master 6000 Special Edition. And, excuse me, what is this? Excuse me. This is a large print speech dictionary and thesaurus. And I used this all the time when I was in school to look things up. And by the time I got to high school, there were new words coming up all the time and I didn't really have a need for it. I was using large print dictionaries that were about as big as a phone book and a half, but, you know, um, we just felt that the dictionary that was contained in this device was somewhat outdated. I kept this device all the way through high school, in fact. Believe it or not, um, it came with headphones and it came with a cassette, uh, an instruction tape, and I returned the instruction tape, I returned the device, I returned the carry case, but for some reason I couldn't find the headphones. So I spoke to the department about this, to my vision department in my school district, and they said, oh, that's fine. The headphones weren't really working anyway. Um, they were just cheap $5 headphones you could get at Walmart these days. So there's that. Then there was this. I didn't see this beyond elementary school. This is the Franklin, the Franklin, I'm sorry, the Sharp EL640 Talking Clock and Calculator. Now this thing was super fancy. It had, obviously, a calculator, 
but it had um, very advanced functions. Not, not as high as a TI-83, but I would say it could probably get you through at least middle school. Once you got into high school, you'd probably need something a little more complex. But it would definitely get you through middle school. But again, I didn't see this beyond elementary school. My guess is they'd been in the district for a long while and were being retired as I was transitioning from elementary school into middle school. But I loved this thing. Calculator. It had a clock with alarms. Multiple alarms, in fact. It had a stopwatch. It had a timer. And it had a super cool... Um, um, voice that by today's standards would be very robotic, but um, but back then, you know, it was it was totally awesome. These things are so popular and so rare that the chances of you snagging one today are pretty much zero. These are really, um, if anybody around my age grew up with one of these, you know what I'm talking about. This thing was absolutely amazing for what it was. And of course, when you're in school, you have to keep track of the time. This was my very first talking wristwatch. And this, the mine had Radio Shack branding because this was back in the 90s when Radio Shack had a contract with the developer, with the manufacturer of these watches and was able to sell them for cheap if they printed their name on them and so forth, um, which incidentally, just a little side note, I don't know if anybody heard, but Radio Shack's gone bankrupt or uh, is applying for bankruptcy, so, yeah. um, anyway, very first talking watch, this thing had a rooster, it had a really loud voice, and when I say loud, I mean it, loud and obnoxious, by today's standards, nobody, I'm sure that nobody would want to hear it unless you're a aching for nostalgia. These watches, believe it or not, are still being produced. They're still being produced after, you know, I had this watch when, um, when I was in elementary school, so these watches have been around for like 25 years or something, and they're still being produced. They are super cheap. 11 bucks. Throwaway. These are literally throwaway watches. And how are they throwaway? Well, you probably noticed I zoomed into the speaker panel. Take a look around here where my arrow is. This little speaker plate fell off before, you know, before I even left elementary school. The, the speaker plate on this thing just fell off. It was... Wow. So if we do Control-Tab, the next item, a Nintendo Entertainment System. My grandparents had one of these. Actually, it was my uncle's. And... I grew up playing the original Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 2, Super Mario Brothers 3, Duck Hunt, Donkey Kong, Burger Time, Donkey Kong Jr., Galaga, and Dig Dug. All of those games I remember fondly. In fact, I've been looking from time to time on iOS to see if they've managed to upload any of the ones. I've got, um, I've got Galaga, and I think I have Dig Dug, but it's definitely a trip down memory lane. So you've got the original Nintendo Entertainment System. You've got the Super Nintendo Mini. The Super Nintendo Mini, um, I remember, came with Super Mario World. We got the System New, and I think... Um, yeah, we got the System New, and we got a lot of games for it used from a place called uh, Replay Toys, which is no longer in business. But I remember I've got... Oh, gosh. I've got a whole slew of games for this thing. Super Mario World, Super Mario All-Stars... Um, some some game with the Super Scope, I can't remember, Yoshi Safari, um, Donkey Kong Country numbers 1, 2, and 3, Star Fox, um, let's see, what else, oh gosh, what else, those are the only ones I can remember off the top of my head. Another car, uh, console that I grew up with was the Nintendo 64. You probably heard that Zelda Majora's Mask is coming out to the Nintendo 3DS within, um, by the end of this week, actually, at the time of this recording. Well, I played the original. I played the original Majora's Mask back in 2000, and I played the original Ocarina of Time in 1996. I played the original Super Mario 64 
when it came out, um, that was re later re-released for the Nintendo DS in 2004. I played Donkey Kong 64. I played Diddy Kong Racing, um, Lego Racers, which I have not been able to find, unfortunately. So just a whole mess of games I remember fondly from the Nintendo 64 the, as they were originally meant to be. By today's standards, the 3D is really blocky, but back then it was state-of-the-art. Another, um, for the portable gaming side, I've got a Game Boy Pocket. I still have it. Grew up with it. Tetris, Super Mario Land, Super Mario Land 2, Wario Land, all kinds of great games. Game Boy Color, Pokemon um, Yellow, Pokemon Silver, Pokemon Gold, um, let's see, what else? Tetris DX, Link's Awake Zelda Link's Awakening DX. Just a whole mess of really cool games that I remember playing. And I also grew up listening to my music on cassettes. It wasn't until like the very last year in middle school, I think, that I got my first CD player. But I remember growing up listening to audio cassettes on this player, the WMFX-193 Walkman, and I also listened to the radio a little bit. But those are basically a little uh, little lo uh, look at the at the um, at the uh, technology I grew up with as a kid. What did you guys grow up with? Thank you for watching. Comments are welcome, and have a nice day.